morning, brothers and sisters. My name is Minister John Pickens with Revelational Ministries, and I would like to thank all of you, amen, for joining me on this Sunday morning uh, for the word of God today. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everyone. The Bible says, let everything that had breath Praise ye the Lord for his praise shall continually, continually be in all of our mouths today. It is always a blessing, brothers and sisters, to be here, uh, to be in and a part of the house of the Lord, to be counted among the living and not among the dead. Now, we are not talking about the physically dead, amen. We're talking also about the spiritually dead. We're, we're thankful to be alive, brothers and sisters, to be alive spiritually and physically, amen, to give God all the praise and glory that he and only he deserves. Bless his holy name today. Before I begin, I have to always start by giving God honor to God and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for saving me from my sins and commissioning me to preach his word, which is the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ to his people all around the world. Amen. It is always a blessing, brothers and sisters, to be here and a privilege and an honor Amen. To go ahead and preach and teach the word of God. Amen. Let us remember in these coming days, brothers and sisters, as we break forward here uh, for the next six months or so of the year, let us keep each and every single one of us in our prayers. <clears throat> let us keep those who are uh, in the north, uh, the New York area, the Montana, the northern part of the United States, those that are dealing with the wildfire effects uh, from Canada. Let us pray for the Canadians themselves or in, in them and anyone around the world or dealing with uh, natural environmental uh, catastrophe type situations, those that are dealing with natural disasters. Let us keep them in our prayers as we continue to move forward uh, throughout this year. For the year is not over yet, brothers and sisters, and there is much danger, there is much peril about us that we must always be cognizant of and thankful for. For those who don't find themselves in that situation, send up a prayer for someone who is and is caught in a snowstorm, caught in an avalanche, caught in an earthquake or the aftermath of torrential floods, the aftermath of torrential rains, uh, those who are dealing with the wildfire. Let us keep those in Hawaii in our prayers who are dealing with the volcanic eruptions that are happening over there. Um, as of now, there, the reports do not state whether or not there are going to be life-threatening conditions, but nonetheless, you never know. Uh, these are the signs, brothers and sisters. These continue to be the signs of the end times uh, that the Lord has prophesied to all of us uh, that was going to happen. Amen. He talked about these things throughout his entire word, specifically in the books of the Gospels, as well as the book of Revelation, the book of Ezekiel and Daniel and others about the types of things that we would see before the end of time, before the end of age. So let us move forward, brothers and sisters, to be thankful for every single thing uh, that we have. I was driving uh, this weekend and uh, on the way to the store. Again, I saw another individual, a man living in horrible conditions, a man under a bridge. It appeared that he had his whole, he had his entire family there. So we must understand, brothers and sisters, that there are always people in worse conditions than what we have. Uh, yes, we only want to point. You see, the enemy has a very good effective way at having us only point at those who have more than us or those who have exactly what we want. Uh, but we must understand, brothers and sisters, uh, he's the Lord is evaluating us, not based upon how much we have, but how content we are with what we have. What are you doing with what you have? Amen. That's going to be his curriculum. That is going to be his grading rubric. So let us be thankful. Excuse me. Let us be thankful. Uh, let us move forward, brothers and sisters, towards uh, the mark of the high calling that he has on each and every single one of our lives. Now, today's scripture in text will be coming from the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians uh, in the New Testament, chapter 3, verses 13 through 14. That's the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verses 13 through 14. Amen. Again, I will be reading from the New King James Version, but every version, any version you have available to you, brothers and sisters, is welcome. Amen. I will start at verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward towards the things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. Verse 13 again. Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehend, but one thing I do, forgetting. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal of the prize for the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless both the hearers and doers of his word. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
We come before you this morning, Heavenly Father, to tell you thank you. We want to tell you thank you, Heavenly Father, for waking us all up this morning. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us all a place to stay, for giving us all clothing to wear, food to put into our bodies. And we want to ask forgiveness for this day, Lord. We want to ask forgiveness for all of our sins, all of our shortcomings, all of our lack of initiative, where you have given us gifts, you have given us opportunities, and we failed to pursue them. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in humbleness and humility to tell you thank you and to ask for forgiveness for all of the things that we have done. And we pray today, Lord, that this word, this manna from heaven, manifests itself into all of our lives today, continue to strengthen us and feed us off of your word. In the blessed almighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray today. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you again, brothers and sisters, amen, for joining us for the word of God today. Now let us take our minds off of everything and everyone and let us place it on Jesus Christ. Today, I'd like to speak with you for a few moments uh, concerning the message of forgetting those things which are behind. Yes, forget those things which are behind. Thank you again, all of you, uh, for joining me this morning. Thank you, Minister Eliza Collins. Thank you, uh, all of you, amen, from wherever you are joining me within the United States and all around the world, amen. Well, brothers and sisters, we have to sometimes ask ourselves some questions. Do you have trouble letting go of the past? Uh, do, does someone you know have trouble letting go of the past? Uh, do you find it difficult? Uh, do we find it difficult to move forward with what God's plan is for our life, uh, because we're still trying to hold on to the old plan that we have for our life, or we're still trying to hold on to the old plan that other people have for our life. Well, brothers and sisters, all of us, amen, you, we either have found ourselves in that trap or you will find yourselves in that trap. Uh, so again, there is no need to look to our left or to our right. The only person that we need to look at is the person in the mirror, because whatever it is, we have time, rough times of letting go of particular things in the past, uh, people, places, events, things that have taken place, amen, various events in history. There are many people who are addicted to certain points in times in history. This is why, uh, to put to bed the myth of time travel. Yes, time travel is very real, brothers and sisters. I'm not talking about getting into a box or a time machine and physically going back in time. Uh, the machine is your head. Uh, you can go back in time into your own head on a regular basis. Uh, but brothers and sisters, the word of God is here today as it has always been and as it has always will be. It's here to reveal the truth. It is here to reveal uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ into our lives. And the reality is, brothers and sisters, if we are to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if we are to walk, to learn to walk into the spirit, uh, and not by our flesh, which is a lifelong journey. Uh, this is not a journey of perfection that's going to happen the moment you walk down the aisle and get baptized. This is a process, brothers and sisters. This is a process that's going to take place uh, for the rest of our lives. But if we are to embark on that, we're going to have to do some things, brothers and sisters. We're going to have to do some very, very important things. One and foremost, leaving the things in the past of the past. Verse 13 says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Now, the speaker here is the Apostle Paul. We know the Apostle Paul uh, before he became Paul was Saul. Uh, he was a Pharisee, a man, a high ranking Pharisee who had obtained letters and authorization to go around uh, all of Judea throughout even parts of Europe and Asia persecuting the church, amen, persecuting the new members who were believing and walking with Jesus Christ. And he did that. Uh, he did that. He was very good at it. Many of them died, amen. He uh, was responsible for the death of many, many believers. So Paul is talking from experience. He's not simply talking about uh, someone who couldn't get over an addiction. He's not simply talking about someone who had trouble with folks in the past. He's, he's talking about himself. He's talking about himself and projecting uh, for all of the church, because remember, the Apostle Paul is credited with writing over two thirds, over two thirds of the New Testament. So he's speaking to all of the churches. He's speaking to all of the people. Yes, specifically here, the people of Philippians, but he's speaking to all a man of the church. And he's saying, look, I do not count to myself, uh, but have one thing, a man to apprehend one thing, but to forget those things which are behind a man and to press forward. Brothers and sisters, I'm not sure how many of you have seen a person 
walk forward and backward at the same time, but the two is not going to take place. Uh, you're not going to move both forward in life and backward at the same time. And we must understand who the son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Before Christ ever healed someone, he would always ask them, do you believe? Do you believe that you can be healed? Do you believe, amen, that you can be saved? Do you believe that you can see, taste and touch and hear? Do you believe that you can be delivered? If you believe, he's saying you are going to be healed by your faith, amen, by your faith. Now, in order for that to take place, we have to move forward. If the Lord has healed you from a state of blindness in your life, why would you then go forward and then act as if you were still blind? If the Lord has healed you, he has taken the lame and given them the ability to walk. Why would you then go still around on crutches? If the Lord has blessed you to fly, amen, he has given a bird the ability to fly. So why would a bird with the ability to fly never fly, never use its wings, only use its legs? We're not going to be able to move forward in our life, brothers and sisters, by constantly looking back much less by living in the past. So reaching forward towards those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call in Jesus Christ. How many of you have ever tried to accomplish something? Perhaps it was your goal to paint a canvas. Perhaps it was your goal to make the football team, uh, to make a specific, a specific group, to start a business venture. Whatever your goal is, uh, we're taught in school and we're taught just in our families Make a plan. Make a plan, one, two, three, or one through 10. How many ever steps are going to be necessary? Uh, make a list of the supplies that you are going to need, the tools that you are going to need. Also make a list of names of the people that you are going to need to reach out to. Make a business plan, so to speak. Make a goal plan. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm not sure about you, but it's going to be very difficult to accomplish steps two through 10 if we're constantly only stuck on step one. We're not going to be able to get to steps three through 10 if we're only stuck on steps one and two. How many of us have come up through the public school education system? Uh, it starts out from pre-K or K uh, kindergarten all the way up through your 12th grade year. It is going to be impossible, brothers and sisters, to get to your senior year if you're still stuck in kindergarten, if you're still stuck in first grade, second grade, and fourth grade. You're not going to be able to get to middle school, brothers and sisters, until you complete elementary school. The Lord, our God, brothers and sisters, wants us to press forward towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus towards the upward call, brothers and sisters, not a lateral move, not a move heading backwards towards the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. But in order for that to take place, brothers and sisters, we're going to have to learn to move forward. Uh, we have to learn to move forward by, yes, forgetting those things which are behind. Now, many people, many people, many people, uh, all of us, uh, starting with myself, will have issues moving forward. Why? Because we're too attached. We're too attached to a particular failure that we've had. Uh, we're too attached to a particular types of relationship that has failed. Uh, we're too attached to a particular career, amen, that we let go of. Whatever it is, brothers and sisters, in order for us to turn the chapter, in order for us to turn the page, uh, you literally have to turn the page. How many of you can get through a book? How many have read a book uh, but you've only still stuck on the first page. How many of you have read all the chapters in the book, but you never got past the first and second chapter? Is not going to happen. Our entire life, brothers and sisters, is more than a book. Amen. Christ Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the author and finisher of our very life. We're not going to be able to get to all of the various chapters in our life if we're constantly stuck in chapters one, two, and three. But there is a way, brothers and sisters, there's a way to move forward. Amen. There's a healthy way and there's an unhealthy way to seemingly do everything. Amen. The unhealthy way, amen, to move forward in the past is to simply act, uh, to use a phrase, phrase, cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance, meaning we just seem to forget every single thing that we've done. We seem to forget every single thing. Yes, that has happened to us. And we just move forward as if we have no past. That's the unhealthy way to do it. The healthy way to do it, brothers and sisters, is to put all of our burdens on him, cast our cares upon him. But too often times we want to cast our cares upon one another. We want to cast our cares upon a husband or a wife or their children, whomever it is. But none of those people can essentially help you. They can listen to you. Uh, we can get counseling, which we should. We, should. we can get therapy, which we should. But ultimately, the therapist is just there to listen. But brothers and sisters, I know a counselor who's going to do more than listen. I know a counselor who can do more than just 
go ahead and have you lay on the couch, amen, and give you a warm cup of milk. I know someone, brothers and sisters, by the name of Jesus Christ, amen. He is our Lord of Lords. He is our Kings of Kings. He is our heavenly counselor. And he is here today, brothers and sisters, in his word to teach us how to move forward into our life, to teach us how uh, to move forward towards the mark of the high calling. If you could turn with me, uh, quickly to the book of Psalms. Amen. The book of Psalms, chapter one, verses one through six. That's the book of Psalms, chapter one, verses one through six. And here we're going to look at a very important way in which it makes us very difficult uh, to move forward, to forget the things of the past. Uh, verse one says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man who walks not into the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Brothers and sisters, oftentimes the reason why it's very difficult for us to move forward and forget the things of the past and to move forward towards new things is because we're walking with the wrong people. We're walking with the wrong people. We're running with the wrong people. Now I hear the echoes and the choruses already. Well, brother, I really don't have any friends. Uh, so I'm really not uh, walking in the counsel of the ungodly because I'm not walking in the counsel of anyone. Well, brother, I fail to, uh, I fail to agree with that. Uh, the Bible says we're always taking advice from someone. Where do you get your information? Do you get your information from social media? Do you get your information from the internet? Do you get your information from a friend that may not be with you physically, but somehow you're still taking advice from a BFF who's feeding you poisonous information. The Bible says, he who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Brothers and sisters, wherever you get your information from, that amen is your friends. Wherever you get your knowledge from, amen, those are the people in whose counsel you are taking. Uh, we're not talking simply about a guidance counselor or a therapist or a psychologist, a psychiatrist. Anyone, brothers and sisters, who feeds you information, anything that feeds you information, that is the counsel that the Bible is talking about. If you are having trouble with relationships, why are we seeking the information to heal us simply from the things of this world? It's not to say there's nothing that can be learned from someone else's situation, but the Bible says make sure that this is godly information, not ungodly information. If we are being fed constantly poisonous things about the other genders, if we're constantly being fed poisonous information about other groups of people, skin colors, and et cetera, then we should continue to expect to make it very difficult to move forward from the things of the past because we are walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornfuls. Now, many people will see that term sinners and think that you're attacking them. Well, first of all, the Bible says, again, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, so why does the Bible continue to say sinners, amen, when all have sinned? The Bible, the word of God here makes a connotation between saints and the sinners. Yes, the saints have sinned as well, but there is a difference, brothers and sisters, between those who have accepted Christ and are on the path, amen, to walk by the spirit versus those who do not believe they need Jesus Christ. They do not believe, amen, in following the Bible. They do not believe in following the word of God. This is who the Bible is distinguishing between sinners and those who are not, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Brothers and sisters, he did not save us. He did not bless us with a new testimony. And with that testimony, he came and gave us stones to throw at one another. None of us, brothers and sisters, are going to sit on that righteous seat. None of us are going to sit at the mercy seat. All of us will be bowing down before the mercy seat. Every single one of us will be bowing down, prostrate before his throne. Why? Uh, because none of us can sit on that seat of the scornful. So those who do sit on that seat, i.e. the enemy, who is the accuser of the people, i.e. the Pharisees, the Sadducees, those whom among us who profess to be perfect, perfect in the ways of the law, perfect in the ways of God, or those who are perfect in the world. This is why many people need to understand, just because you do not establish yourself with a particular religion, you may be a self proclaimed atheist and whatnot. If we walk, brothers and sisters, in this world where we believe we do not need Jesus, where we do not need God, you are walking in a state of perfection. You are the ones who the Lord says, look, he did not come to save those who are perfect. He came to save the sinners. He came to save those who need the doctor. Do you need a doctor this morning, brothers and sisters? Bless his holy name today. Verse two says, but his delight is in the law of God. And in his law, he meditates day and night. This harkens back, brothers and sisters, to the, uh, to the book of Joshua, the Old Testament, where the Hebrews were coming out of Egypt. 
Moses has saved the people from the grips of Pharaoh. They crossed the Red Seas. They made it through the deserts uh, of wilderness for 40 years, brothers and sisters, wandering around, wondering what was going to happen. But once Moses passed away, Joshua took over and the Lord commanded Joshua. He commissioned him to read his word, to let it not depart from his mouth day or night. And he's doing that to us right here, brothers and sisters. But he, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Do we meditate, brothers and sisters, on the word of God? Or are we constantly meditating on that thing that happened to us in the past? Are we constantly meditating on that career that we wanted, uh, our dreams to make it to the league? What, whatever it is, are we constantly meditating on our failures or are we meditating on the word of God? You see, even if you accomplish that thing that you wanted, it was not going to last. Remember, all of those things come to an end. So yes, we rather accomplish it versus not, but most people aren't going to accomplish those things. So, and those who do, are still going to need the word of God because just because you have something today does not mean you are going to have it tomorrow. So are we placing our faith and hope of things eternal or of the things of this material world? Verse three says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. That brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. The word throughout the word, you see Jesus, brothers and sisters, constantly making us uh, an analogy to trees, constantly talking about sowing seeds and spreading seeds and growing trees and trees bringing forth fruit. Well, the Bible says here, those, amen, that meditate on his word day and night, those that delight in the law of the Lord shall be like a tree, a tree planted strong, brothers and sisters, by the rivers of water. Now, all of us are trees. Now, excuse me, where are we planted? Are you being planted in fertile soil, brothers and sisters? You may have been planted in soil that was unfertile, uh, but the Lord has came to fertilize that soil. He has come to replant you in new soil, brothers and sisters. But do we find ourselves still wanting to keep our roots into the things of the past? Do we want to move forward? Uh, if Jesus was here in physical form, he is right here in spiritual form. If he could come to each of us physically again, no matter what your problem is, he would ask you the exact same thing he told those whom in the word, would you be made whole? Will you be healed? Do you want to see? Do you believe that he can heal you? He's going to ask those same questions. And if your response is, I'm not sure, or yes, I do want to be healed, but I want to continuously talk about the old man instead of putting on the new man. Amen. You want to talk about the old woman instead of talking about the new woman. Amen. We want to talk about our past. If we want to talk about our past more than we want to talk about our future, then the Lord is here today, brothers and sisters, to let us know we are not forgetting those things which are behind and we are not moving forward and pressing towards the mark of the high call, which is implying uh, if we're not moving forward, we're moving backwards town the, uh, towards the downward call. Amen. So let us make sure, brothers and sisters, we are moving forward in all of our lives. Not saying that there's not going to be pain. Not saying that there's not going to be problems. Not saying we're not going to have emotional lapses from time to time. But what are we doing? You're constantly moving forward. Amen. Bless his holy name today. Please turn with me quickly. Uh, shortly to the book of Colossians, uh, back to the New Testament, uh, the book of Colossians, chapter three, verses one through seven. That's the book of Colossians, chapter three, uh, verses one through seven. And we're going to find out just why, again, how many of us, brothers and sisters, have trouble putting the things and letting go of the past. Verse, uh, three, or verse one says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. Brothers and sisters, oftentimes we can't get out of the past is because our minds are only on the things of the earth. Your list of dreams and hopes and accomplishments. If we look at that list, we're all told to make lists like that when you were a child. When you're in kindergarten, they tell you to list all the things that you want out. Every single thing we list on that page is of the earth. Every single thing. Now, you don't know that when you're a child, but remember, uh, when you grow as a man or a woman, you begin to put those things as a child off. So a child puts down every single thing on that list, whether it's three things, five or 10 or more, every single thing you put on that list is of the earth. Uh, your your family, amen, money, amen, cars, success, homes, uh, wealth, titles, education, whatever it is, everything we put on that list, brothers and sisters, is of the world. But he says right here, seek those things 
which are above. Amen. Jesus says always, brothers and sisters, place your hopes in things eternal. The things of this earth are going to let you down no matter what it is. Don't look at what someone else has in their life that you don't because they can turn right back around and look at things that you have that they don't. No matter who you are, brothers and sisters, there's going to be something that we want for all of us on this world. But he's telling us, if you place your hope and faith in those things, then you are going to get the just rewards for doing that. Those things are always going to let you down. Those things cannot heal you. Those things can only bring, brothers and sisters, temporary pleasure, uh, temporary satisfaction, temporary success. But the Lord our God is here today, brothers and sisters, in his word to tell us that there is a new way a better way, an eternal way, bless his holy name today, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. So he's saying, don't just put your hopes in things even in the sky. Don't put your hopes just in things in heaven. He's saying, go even higher than that. He's saying, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand. So he's saying, put your goals, put your hope and faith in things of Christ Jesus all the way up to the throne, amen, past the sky, past just simply getting to heaven. He says, put your hopes in him, brothers and sisters. Why? Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. Uh, the New York Times and USA Today constantly plays articles out, uh, very interesting articles about the statistics of those suffering from all sorts of things, from financial issues, emotional issues, uh, issues of the past, whatever it may be, brothers and sisters. Now, they don't give a solution. They only simply talk of the problem. Uh, sure, they, they list uh, a set of circumstances that people can do or partake that could help, obviously, counseling therapy that we all need from time to time. Uh, but the Bible says here what the real issue is. All of us have our minds simply based on the things of this world. Uh, yes, we are here physically in this world. But Jesus said that man shall not live, brothers and sisters, by bread alone, by, by every word that uttereth from the mouth of God. We have to stay in his word, brothers and sisters. Uh, if you're having an emotional time, you're having a breakup, go to God's word. Um, if you just lost all your money in the gambling hall, go to God's word. You just had a terrible breakup with that boyfriend, a terrible breakup with that husband, that wife, go to God's word, amen. If you're having problems with issues with mental health, physical health, there's healing, brothers and sisters. If you're having issues with your heart, you're having issues uh, with your body, go to the word of God. Uh, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word is Jesus, brothers and sisters. Yes, it's a physical. When you're holding the word in your hand, uh, you're holding Jesus. Amen. He is the walking embodiment of his word. So we need to go to him when we are down. There's nothing wrong with having our medication. Uh, I know there's many that don't believe in that and many that believe in it too much. But the reality is there is a, a, a place, a time and a place for these things. But our ultimate prescription is the word of God. Verse three goes on to say, for you died, you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Now, this is speaking to those who are walking with Jesus, those who want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. When you decide to have that relationship, brothers and sisters, rest assured you are going to die to the world. You are going to die to your old self and you are going to rise again in Christ. He says, but your life, this new life is hidden with Christ in God. So many people will say, well, brother, I'm looking at the people in the world and I see they have all the money. They have all the relationships. They have all the connections. Their businesses are prospering. But I'm looking across the street of those people in the church. You've been saved for 50 years, 60, 70 years, worshiping God and paying tithes and offerings, and you still broken poor. Brothers and sisters, the word of God says your life is hidden with Christ in God. People are not going to be able to see your true form, brothers and sisters. Uh, remember, Jesus took uh, Peter, James, and John up to the mountaintop for the transfiguration of Christ. And there on the mountain, they got a glimpse of his glory. Just as Moses received the glimpse of the glory of God at the top of Mount Sinai, uh, they saw Jesus littered with the light that they could not even describe. Uh, he's telling us today, brothers and sisters, our true life, those who are walking with Christ, those who have given their life, accepted their imperfections. They have accepted their imperfections and are moving forward in Christ Jesus. It says your new life is going to be hidden. Your new life is going to be hidden in Christ Jesus. So there's no point in comparing yourself to the things of the world. You're always going to have less money than the, the people in the world. I said it. You're not going to be able to have every single thing. You see all of these people out here on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and all of the, all of the social media. 
You're not going to be able to have that type of lifestyle on this physical side. Why? Your new life is hidden in Christ Jesus. So verse four says, when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in his glory. Now, it says, when Christ, who is our life, Christ is our life, brothers and sisters, not the life that you want, not the relationship that you want with other people, not the careers and not the titles, not the prestiges, not all of these things that we're searching after in the things of this world. Those who want a relationship with Jesus Christ understand your life is Christ. Amen. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in his glory. When he manifests himself in our life, brothers and sisters, just as he did on the mountaintop of the transfiguration, just as he did, amen, as he ascended up into heaven. And just as the word says, just as we saw him leave, he is going to return. It says we too will appear with him in glory. But we don't want to wait until that moment, brothers and sisters. We don't want to wait until it's too late. Uh, let us go ahead and turn our life back to him now. Let us move forward and forget those things which are behind. If you return with me to the book of Proverbs, uh, that's the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 27. That's the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verses one through seven. And here again, we're going to see another reason, um, another, uh, you could say, cause and effect as to why it's very difficult for us to move forward, forgetting those things which are behind. Why? Because oftentimes we lack wisdom. Chapter four, verses one says, hear my children, the instruction of a father and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, not bad doctrine. He says, I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law, for when I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother. He also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Bless his holy name. So brothers and sisters, we have to just put the plain truth out in front of us. Oftentimes, it's very difficult for us to move forward with our life is because we lack wisdom. Amen. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask. Uh, not ask your mothers and brothers and sisters. Ask the Lord. The Lord is going to reveal himself oftentimes through them. He'll use them to tell you a good word here and there. But most importantly, he wants you to return to his word. Return to his word first. Amen. Yes, go and pray. Yes, go and ask. But he's going to direct you directly to his word. Because oftentimes we believe that what we are dealing with is so severe that no one on this earth has ever experienced that before. That is another lie. Amen. From the enemy. Amen. There is nothing new under the sun, brothers and sisters. There are somewhere, some, uh, someone somewhere around this world and in the past that has endured the exact same situation that you were in, albeit the technology was different, um, albeit that they didn't have televisions hundreds of years ago. But brothers and sisters, the same family dynamics that took place in the Garden of Eden took place in Jerusalem took place throughout Judea, throughout Israel, that's taking place in America all throughout the world today. So brothers and sisters, hear my children, the instruction of a father. Now here, the author is King Solomon speaking on behalf of what the, the words that he retained from his father, but he's also speaking on behalf of the father in heaven. Hear my children, the instruction of a father. The father is the most high. He is speaking to all of us. He's commanding all of us to seek wisdom. Amen. Stop trying to rely on the things that you think that you know. Stop relying on your emotions. Too many of us are emotionally driven. Um, we're always relying on our feelings. We're so into our feelings. If it doesn't feel good, then it must not be good. These are traps, brothers and sisters. Traps from the enemy. Amen. And give attention to no understanding. Knowing understanding is very interesting. Brothers and sisters, if wisdom is presented to you, will you know it? Will you be able to identify it? from the difference between a rock and a tree. Uh, it says, give attention to no understanding. When we're praying for wisdom, we need to also pray to be able to recognize. We need to be able to recognize when a broken clock can be twice, uh, to, uh, right twice a day. Sometimes your wisdom, sometimes the information that he's going to give us is going to come from unseemly places. Uh, the prophet Balaam, amen, had an encounter 
with a donkey, amen, where the Lord spoke through the donkey. Brothers and sisters, he will speak through whatever circumstance he desires. Uh, it could be a car accident. It could be a health issue. It could be a financial issue you're having with the bank. Whatever it is, brothers and sisters, the Lord is always speaking to you. He's always speaking to you. I used to remember uh, my grandmother. And when she would teach us about the word, I would oftentimes ask her about the Holy Spirit. How do we know, grandmother, how do we know the Holy Spirit is speaking to us? She would direct me to the word. Uh, the Holy Spirit is a small, still voice. Amen. A small, still voice, just as he spoke uh, to the prophet Elijah. Amen. In the book of Kings. But oftentimes we will miss that small, still voice because we want everything loud. Uh, we want everything distracting. We have the music turned up a little bit too high in our life. And I'm not talking just about physical music. I'm talking about the noise of life. Oftentimes we are too addicted to drama. Yes, I said it again. There are many of us who are too addicted to drama that we're so only concerned about what is happening in our, in our life. Uh, we have our, eternals, our channels turned to TMZ. We have our turn, uh, channels turned to the BETs of the world instead of focusing, amen, on listening to that small, still voice. If you want true help, brothers and sisters, and there are some out there who do not want help, but for those who are seeking help, for those who want, amen, to move forward and to leave those things which are behind in the past, we're going to have to listen to that small, still voice, that voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of wisdom. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother. Oftentimes, people will misunderstand this relationship amongst mother and children. Uh, oftentimes, your mothers and yes, some fathers, they will be the only ones to be able to view you in an innocent, excuse me, in an innocent light. No one else in the world is going to view you that way. So oftentimes, we need to understand that this world that we live in, brothers and sisters, is going to be a very hostile environment. Uh, you're not going to find many people unless you pay a therapist or a psychiatrist. You're not going to find many people that are going to put you on the couch and just listen to all of your problems and give you so all sorts of solutions. Uh, if you find yourself in that situation, don't forget Psalms 1. Blessed is he who walks not into the counsel of the ungodly. So do not forsake my law. Now, people are going to make their mistakes. We know that. We all have done them, and we all continue to do them. But the word is saying here, do not forsake his law. Amen. He also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Amen. This seems to imply that if you do not keep the commands, you will not live. Now, King Solomon's father, as we know, is all famously King David. King David, a man listed as God's own, after God's own heart. Amen. He lived, brothers and sisters. He lived. He seemingly did all the things, amen, that he wanted to do. He was a man of war, but he was also a man of song. Amen. He was a man of praise. Amen. He was a man of giving thanks to the Most High. Uh, he slayed. He slayed giants on the battlefield. He slayed giants off the battlefield, but oftentimes the most important uh, battles that he ran into were the battles of within himself, the battles in his mind, the battles of his own body, the battles of his flesh. King David is a typology of all of us. Many people would only put themselves on a pedestal, but the reality is none of us are going to be on a pedestal, nor are our sins going to be on a pedestal, nor should we promote the person we used to be. But King David is a typology, brothers and sisters, just like our other brothers and sisters in the word. Uh, supposed to be an example for us all. Here, he was a man who did, amen, what God told him to do, but he also did what God told him not to do. So here, the Bible, the word of God says he is a man after God's own heart. Um, so he understands us, brothers and sisters. He understands us because he made us. And he's saying right here, keep my commands and live. He's commanding his son, King Solomon, uh, to listen to his words. He's saying, Solomon, I've already lived life. I've lived it in these times, these years that I've had many times over again. Now, King Solomon was one, a son of many, many uh, children, of many, many household because of the uh, infidelity that took place with King David and Bathsheba. Uh, we know the prophet Nathan prophesied over King David, the sword would never leave his household. And we saw time and time again, instance after instance, starting with his oldest son, Absalom, uh, going all the way down the list. There seemed to be problems and troubles uh, at every turn. Now, King Solomon is coming to reign a man of Israel in the midst of all of this. His brothers and sisters are skeptical of him. They're wondering why he's not the oldest or not even one of the oldest, but yet he is being placed in charge. And we know King Solomon, when he prayed to the Lord for help, he didn't ask for money. 
He didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for properties and real estates and business coaches. He asked for wisdom. Amen. He asked for wisdom from the most high because that is what was going to be needed to get him through. Now, we know that he himself would fall wayward, amen, by following uh, idol gods uh, because of all of the types of women that he uh, ended up being engaged in. And we must understand in this world, brothers and sisters, who you choose to get into a relationship with can affect you. Uh, many of us are forgetting that it's difficult for us to move forward from the things of the past because we are still in covenant with people that we should not be in covenant with. Now, again, no one is pointing fingers at the Joes or the Janes because we all are the Joes and the Janes. But the standard is here nonetheless for us all, brothers and sisters. And he's saying, listen, if you want to move forward, if you want to move forward and forget those things or what you're behind, you cannot walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You cannot have fellowship, brothers and sisters, and our relationships uh, and our business ships and our partnerships. You cannot get into covenant with people who are quote unquote snakes and then wonder why, amen, we continuously get bit by the poison of the serpents. Get out of those relationships, amen. The Bible says, get wisdom, get understanding. Do now, there's exclamation points placed there. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Amen. There's a famous in movies that says, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Well, that came from the Bible, brothers and sisters. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do we understand, brothers and sisters, the things that he is trying to show us? If we do not, we need to get understanding from him. Amen. And he's going to he's gonna unveil it to you. He may unveil his wisdom to your grandmother, through your grandfather, your mother, your father perhaps a friend, a godly friend. Perhaps it could be a school teacher. I remember in school many days, sometimes the teacher will be teaching about history or economics or math. And then sometimes they'll say something that's very focal. It will always stick with you. Sometimes you'll be uh, in a crowd of people you do not know. And someone approaches you, uh, perhaps a coworker at a job, someone that you don't know, and they'll say something to you very insightful. The Lord is going to get his wisdom across to you. Remember, his word shall not return to him void. So he's not making a promise that he is not going to keep, brothers and sisters. If we want wisdom, wisdom calls to us. It calls to us out in the streets. Many people who are living in the streets, amen, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually. The Bible says wisdom calls out to us in the streets. No matter where you are, brothers and sisters, there is nowhere that his word cannot reach. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will remain forevermore. Do not forsake her, amen, her wisdom. She will preserve you. Now, oftentimes we will see wisdom being referred uh, with the feminine, uh, in a feminine sense. Feminine meaning to create, procreate, amen, to multiply. So wisdom multiplies, brothers and sisters. Wisdom multiplies, it adds, amen, such as compound interest, there's compound wisdom. Make sure we're standing in position to observe, to obtain that wisdom, brothers and sisters. Now, these are not going to be things that we oftentimes want to hear. Uh, remember, the Lord says, if you do not listen uh, to the pastors and the preachers and the teachers that I send you, I will make your enemy, amen, the book of Jeremiah. He told them, I will make their enemies their pastors. I remember specifically going through something in my life years ago where I could not pass a particular evaluation, and yet uh, I was placed under the mentorship of someone who I was not very fond of. And that person told me, uh, you could say, as we say, the 411 or like it IS is, you need to do this, you need to study harder, you need to do this. Uh, and then you know what, brothers and sisters, something miraculous happened. I end up accomplishing that feat. So sometimes, brothers and sisters, if we do not listen, he says, if you do not listen, amen, to those whom he send you, he is going to send things that you will listen to, amen. Pharaoh, uh, in the book of Exodus, Pharaoh did not understand what was happening. The Lord hardened his heart uh, because he wanted to teach us all lessons. Those 10 plagues that he sent, brothers and sisters, those were 10 pastors, those were 10 signs and miracles and wonders that he sent to teach Pharaoh, to teach us all, amen, the situations that we see happening throughout the word, amen. We see the walls of Jericho, amen. We see the signs and wonders that the Lord told us that is going to take place in the end times, and many of us are disregarding them. Many of us are disregarding them. We constantly want to live and do our own thing. We want to live our own truth, uh, as to speak, as the new phrase of the day. Well, when Noah received his prophecy, brothers and sisters, when Noah received his word from the Lord in a dream, he only had that dream once. And Noah didn't have time to go out there and to convince the world of the things uh, that were to come. Now, Noah could have chose to live in his past. 
He could have chose, I'm going to disregard what the Lord told me. But if he had done so, him and his family also would have been caught up in the flood because the Lord didn't change his mind. The flood was coming. And brothers and sisters, the flood is still coming. Amen. The flood is coming. Uh, the signs and miracles that the Bible promised are going to continue to unfold. But are we paying attention? If we're not paying attention, is it because we are still stuck in the past? Are we still stuck on things that have occurred uh, to us uh, that we think has not occurred to anyone else on the world? No one else in the history of time has ever occurred to these things. So we feel that the word of God is not responsive to our problems. But we could not be more wrong, brothers and sisters. We could not be more wrong. Six, do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. The her that the word is talking about, again, is wisdom. She will preserve you, brothers and sisters. Many people will look at others and see physically how life has taken a toll on them. Oftentimes, we can see the physical toll that life has taken. And we're not talking about someone who is enduring a life-threatening illness, a life-terminal illness. We're just talking about the wear and tears of life. Uh, if you have a car, brothers and sisters, and most of us have half cars or driven them or will drive them. If you drive it very tough, if you drive it uh, very through very tough terrain, the tires are going to wear out faster than what they are. The brakes are going to wear out the shocks and the suspension. The oil is going to need changing more than it should. Now, we know that is what we call normal wear and tear on the vehicle. But if you give it more than its fair share, then you're going to put more miles on the engine than what needed to be and that was supposed to be. Well, we're doing the same thing with our life, brothers and sisters. We see oftentimes many of us have aged rapidly, not just physically, but spiritually. Why? Because we're doing things that we're not supposed to do. The Bible says, do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Wisdom will preserve your spirits. Wisdom will preserve your hearts. The Bible says, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. If you do not guard it, brothers and sisters, if you do not protect it, uh, meaning we're too busy trying to open it to everything and to everyone in the world. If you're constantly trying to open your heart to the world, then again, we are going to get rewarded with the actions that we seek. The Bible says, love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Many of us, brothers and sisters, are looking for the keys to life. We're looking for the fountains of youth. We're looking for that uh, six-figure person to walk into our life. Well, the Bible says wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is what King Solomon prayed for. Uh, many of us do not understand. We already have access to the things of this world. Uh, they're not going to come easy. Uh, you have to work for it, but we always have access. But what we also need in order to really enact these things is wisdom. Otherwise, we're going to go at life the way that we want to do it. And it's very important. Uh, that listen, we all know that we're going to do certain things, but the Bible is here as our tool, brothers and sisters, as a guide for us to help us chart these rough waters of life. Now, many are saying, well, there's no point in using that because uh, you're going to make mistakes anyway. Well, I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but if I had listened to certain things, there are certain things I would not have gone through. Now, other things we were going to go through anyway, but nonetheless, his word is here uh, to stop very catastrophic things from taking place. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Many of us are enrolled in college. Many are trying to finish that doctorate degree. You're trying to finish that master's degree, that bachelor's degree. The Bible says in all you're getting in this world, get understanding. Amen. Understanding. Now, education is knowledge. Knowledge is information. It's basically substance. It's stuff. It's things that you know. Uh, intelligence is not the same as education. Intelligence, you could say, is how fast you interpret that information. Uh, intelligence is something, amen, that again comes from the most high. So oftentimes we're trying to catch up with people and things when the reality is he created us all for different purposes. Now we can still obtain an education. We can still obtain more knowledge. But the Bible says in all these things to get understanding. Having a lot of information, having a lot of degrees on your wall does you no good if you do not have understanding. You can have every single interpretation of the Bible that there is in Hebrew, in Aramaic, in Greek, in English, in Espanol or Japanese, whatever translation you want. The New King James Version, the King James Version, the Message Version, the New International Version, the New Living Translation, whatever it is, brothers and sisters, you can have all the information and education in the world, but it will do you no good if you do not get understanding. The understanding is the interpretation of what the word means. The interpretation 
of what the dream means. We all know of the prophet Daniel, uh, the prophet, uh, you could say, uh, Joseph, uh, where he essentially was uh, bestowed upon him dreams, amen, dreams uh, that he interpreted, that the Lord gave him the interpretation to. Now, he learned not to tell everyone everything that he dreamed, uh, but uh, the, to make a long story short, essentially, we learned that in order for them to interpret the dreams, they needed understanding. It did them no good to have the dream if we do not know what the dream means. How many of us are creating dreams for ourselves, but we do not know what it means? If your goal is to be a doctor, do you have understanding on what it takes to be a doctor? If your goal is to be an NFL player, an NBA player, a Major League Baseball player, if your goal is to be the president of the United States, if your, if your goal is to have a million-dollar six-figure business, do you know what it takes? Do you have the understanding of what that means to put that together. If your goal is to get a doctorate degree, do you understand the sacrifice that that is going to take in your personal life, in your relationships, the late nights that you're going to spend doing research and creating your dissertations and thesis statements and citations? Do you know what it takes? Are we making dreams for ourselves, brothers and sisters, where we do not have the understanding? We have uh, issues with our relationships. You want a relationship with a particular person. Do you have the understanding on the cost of that relationship? Everything in life has a price tag, brothers and sisters. Oftentimes, the enemy will confuse us to trick us to believe in. And oftentimes, it's not him. It's us. We fail to understand that when you go into that store, Everything has a price tag on it one way or the other. Even the stuff they're giving away for free. Sometimes you'll go into the aisle of the concession stands or a consignment shop and it says here, clearance, one rack, buy one, get one free. And then there'll be another clearance rack that says you can come and take something from the rack for free. But how many of you understand that you had to drive to that place to get that free item? You had to walk to the grocery store to get that free item, which means when you, while you walked, while you drove in your car, you risked life and limb. There was no guarantee you were going to reach that destination. You drove past other vehicles that could have swerved off the road. Uh, you drove through inclement weather. There is a price to be had for every single thing, brothers and sisters. And the Lord our God has showed us, even for us to be able to go to heaven, a price had to be paid. He had to send his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So he's saying even he, it cost him something to get us to heaven. Everything else that we want in this life, brothers and sisters, is going to have a cost. So he's saying, place not your heart on the things that are here on this earth, but are in, are in Christ Jesus are the things up above. And for those who still are insistent on obtaining these things that we have down here on life or down on earth, we are consistent and persistent and only wanting what we want. Understand this. There's a price to be had. There's a price for every car that you want. There's a price for every piece of clothing that you desire. There's a price for that success that you want in that particular career. Every person you want to be in relationship with, there's a price to be had. If you want a relationship with your father, your mother, your brothers, your sisters, you want a relationship, you want to be married, there's a cost that is going to be paid. Uh, if you want children, there's a cost that is going to be. If you want to have good health, there's a cost. You have to eat right. You have to exercise, and that's still no guarantee something could not come upon you. There's a cost to everything, brothers and sisters. So let's make sure in understanding that we have wisdom, and in all of our getting, we have understanding. Verse 8 says, exalt her, and she will promote you. Too often times, brothers and sisters, we are trying to get promoted in this world uh, because we are trying to be arrogant. I've heard too many times, and many of you have. For people in the workplace, the only way to get ahead is by being a not so pleasant person. The only way to get ahead is by being mean and degrading to other people. Those are the ways of the world. And those ways will prosper them somewhat temporarily. But the Bible says, brothers and sisters, the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked uh, and that the candle of the wicked shall be put out. For, so for those who are obtaining power, for those who are obtaining money and prestige by tearing other people down, putting people other down, exalting yourself over others. Understand this, there is a price to be paid. The Bible says, exalt her, exalt wisdom, and she will promote you. Wisdom will promote you, brothers and sisters. And they say your education necessarily would. It didn't say your own knowledge. Wisdom, amen. Wisdom only comes from the Lord. She will bring you honor when you embrace her, amen. She will place on your head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory she will deliver to you. 
Brothers and sisters, too oftentimes we are trying to go after the crown of life. We are trying to obtain the crown of this world. We're trying to achieve our 15 minutes of fame. You see more and more people doing crazy things to try to obtain a title for themselves down here on earth. For those who are in the church, amen, for those who are saved, amen, too many times we're trying to obtain positionings and things that really are meaningless at the end. And plus understand this, to whom much is given, much is required. If the Lord blesses you with that thing that you see, understand he's going to require more of you in your new position than he did of the old position. How many of you have been employees on a job before? And the employee clocks in, they clock out. They basically complete a set of tasks that the managers or their supervisors give them. And then at the completion of said tasks, they can go home. But how many of you want to be supervisors and bosses and leaders? After the clock out period, the boss does not always go home, brothers and sisters. The boss has to stay late. The boss has to make sure that the work was done by the coworkers and the employees. The worker, the boss has to make sure all the money is accounted for, that the building is physically secured. Uh, the boss has to be in charge of hiring and firing people. If someone needs to take off time to go to work, the boss has to make sure that they have other people to fill in. For those who want to be that boss, are you prepared to pay that cost? Are you prepared to stay late? Are you prepared to have uh, issues even in your own personal relationships? Managers and bosses have to work more than the average 40 hours a week on average. Many of them have to work 50, 60, 70 plus hours a week. Many of us covet the position of being a multimillionaire. Do you know that most millionaires do not work 40 hours a week, brothers and sisters? They oftentimes work 50, 60, 70, sometimes 100 plus hours a week. Is that the life that you want for yourself? You want to be a very important businessman, a very important businesswoman. Are you prepared to live that type of life? Amen. Well, we need to understand, again, there's a cost to everything that we want. Uh, and the cost of moving forward is letting go of the past. If you want what Jesus has for you, if you want what God has for you, he's saying you're going to have to pick up your cross. You're going to have to pick up your cross and follow him just as he picked up the cross. The cross that he picked up was all of us. He carried all of us on his back to Mount Calvary. He's not asking you to carry all of your family members. He's not asking you to care for a race of people. He's not asking you to carry the world. He's saying, just pick up your cross, pick up your faults, pick up your wrongdoings, pick up the wrongdoings that other people have done to you. Yes, many people have done bad things to lots of other people. So pick up all of that stuff he's saying and follow him. Amen. That, so that's what we must do, brothers and sisters. We need to go ahead and in order to move forward, we need to let go of the things of the past. We're not letting it go into the ether. We're not letting it go into the atmosphere. We're letting it go to Christ because he is the only one, brothers and sisters, that can do anything about our past. And he is the only one that has given us a successful future. Bless his holy name today. If you seek to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I implore you to do so today, brothers and sisters. Do not wait until tomorrow. Do not wait until tonight, for these things are promised and guaranteed to no man. Again, none, none of us, brothers and sisters, not me, not you, none of us are guaranteed to walk out those doors. None of us was guaranteed to wake up this morning, much less make it to your next destination. So the only time we have right now, brothers and sisters, is just this moment. So we need to decree, or decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus, amen, those who want to come to Christ, those who seek and want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We're not talking about joining a specific church. We're not talking about joining and having a denomination. We're talking about you having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you desire to have that, all you need to do is to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. That he lived and he died and he rose again for your sins and for my sins, the sins of the world. And that he is going to return. He rose. He is going to return for all of his people. If you believe that and confess that, then you are saved Bless his holy name today. And again, for those who are walking with Christ, for those who do have a relationship with Jesus Christ, let us continue to nurture that relationship. Let us continue to nurture it and strengthen it and prune it just as a farmer prunes his trees, amen, taking out the weeds. Let us continue to do that because none of us are perfect and we continue to mess up, but we want to make sure we're constantly pulling those weeds out. Bless his holy name today. Thank you all again for joining me for the word of God today. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, blessed Lord, for this word today. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing to our attention that we need to forget those things which are behind 
and to move forward, Heavenly Father, to move forward towards the call, amen, of the Most High, to move forward towards our upward call in Christ Jesus. So we thank you today, Lord, for your manifestation. We thank you today, Lord, for your uh, salvation. We want to pray today over every single man, woman, and child that was in attendance today, that was able to watch this video is able to watch this where we pray, Lord, that they are saved. We pray, Lord, that they are protected. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for prosperity in every single area of their life in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you again, brothers and sisters, for joining me. Amen. Please join us this week on uh, Facebook. Amen. At Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. for prayer. Uh, Thursday nights at 8 p.m. for Bible study and uh, Sunday mornings, amen, at 11.30 a.m. for the morning word of God. And please remember to visit our YouTube channel, amen, at Revelational Warfare Ministries for additional biblical and word of God content, amen. And if you would also like to add yourself or someone else that you know to our weekly prayer list, please email us at revelationalwarfareministries at yahoo.com. That's Revelational Warfare Ministries at yahoo.com. Brothers and sisters, I am Minister John Pickens, and I would like to thank, with Revelational Ministries, and I would like to thank you all, amen, for joining us for the word of God today. Have a very, very blessed day.